To uncover the treasures of classic Hollywood, one must contend with the tacky commercialism of the present. Those lucky to discover a hidden jewel smack in the heart of town tell its resident caretaker the same thing. They say, I never knew this house was here. And then after, when they come back again, maybe a year later, they say, but now that I know that this house is here, I never miss it. Every time I come up Highland, I see it. It's a house filled with stories about the couple who lived here, about their lives, and about an architect. Frank Lloyd Wright found Southern California so promising, in 1922, he opened a Hollywood office. What he didn't like were the Mediterranean-style houses springing up in the Hollywood Hills. He felt that that was bringing the European thing over here. And he wanted to work more with what he considered the indigenous, what would have been the indigenous people who had lived in the terrain and grown up here over thousands of years. So with a nod to Mayan culture, Wright invented an architecture for the region and for the future. By interlocking custom-designed concrete blocks reinforced with steel, Wright envisioned do-it-yourself homes dotting the hillside. But who would be the first? As my grandfather used to exclaim to clients when they came to him, he said, you know, you're going to be my guinea pigs. Well, the Freemans were really guinea pigs. I think that Harriet and Sam had a new vision of the world, and that that's one of the things that must have driven them to make this place. Sam Freeman has been described as a social socialist, a man who'd fight to integrate public housing and host luncheon get-togethers at the farmer's market. The kid next door recalls a gentleman curious about her love of Dagwood sandwiches and eager to share his love of politics. Sam used to make long speeches to us, which we couldn't understand at all, but that uh, were interesting to us because Sam was such a nice guy. Harriet Freeman was no less colorful, breaking into Hollywood as a mermaid in several of Annette Kellerman's aquatic silent films. A pioneer of modern dance, Harriet made extra cash teaching the starlets of Warner Brothers whatever steps they could manage. By the time construction began, Wright had put his son, architect Lloyd Wright, in charge. A set designer at Paramount, Lloyd was accustomed to having his creations assembled overnight. That wouldn't happen here. Interlocking 12,000 custom-designed blocks posed countless problems. Then there was the client. Harriet Freeman had, was a very strong individual, had very strong ideas and uh, opinions on things, and uh, so, so did my father. So I could see there must have been occasionally fireworks going on while they were getting this constructed. Budgeted at $9,000, the Freemans moved in having paid out $23,000. In 1925, a lot of money for a 1,500-square-foot house. One of its most dramatic features, the interplay of concrete and light. The ample living room dining area on one floor. A small cave-like bedroom below. It's so simple, yet there's a monumental quality to it. I think there's a sense almost of a monk's cell in a certain way, and yet at the same time, obviously, like being in a temple. Right. Um, it's a really extraordinary and very nourishing space to be in. The Freeman House became both a cultural and political center for Hollywood's avant-garde. When the Freemans rented out rooms, it became an artist's home. Photographer Edward Weston lived here. So did Rumba King band leader Xavier Cugat and actor Albert Decker. Actress Helen Walker lived with the Freemans after an incident involving a bottle of whiskey, a serviceman, and a car wreck shortened a promising career. During the McCarthy era, this was home to many blacklisted artists, free of charge. And during that period, the late 40s and early 50s, the house was, was fully occupied. There was a family living down in, in the first apartment and somebody living in the second apartment underneath the garage and people staying up here in the living room. Of the many frequent visitors, Roz DeMille remembers Romanian director John Negalesco best. He was a very handsome, portly gentleman. And uh, my mother used to go out to empty the garbage and he would come out and bow to her. <laughs> she loved that. <laughs> DeMille says Harriet Freeman inspired her career as a dancer and a teacher. She received her famous last name, marrying Cecil B. DeMille's son, Richard. 
When she and Eric Lloyd Wright met while taping this story, they compared famous relatives. And it's so interesting how the, the two, you know, how Mr. DeMille was so much like my grandfather, very commanding, wasn't he? Exactly, they yeah. were both emperors. <laughs> they were, yeah, that was, was. I remember I asked Mr. DeMille one night before he was to begin something, and he said he felt like a general. Mm. <laughs> well, he certainly acted like it when he was on the set. <laughs> he did indeed. <laughs> Unlike most DeMille films, Frank Lloyd Wright's Hollywood story would have no happy ending. He had blueprints for an entire hillside community of block houses, but would see only two other homes built. He was used to working with developers in Chicago who really wanted to have find solutions that were creative and that did create a beautiful environment, as beautiful as you could make for what was the money you had to develop with. Whereas out here he found all their, their only interest of any of the developers was just to make money. Per her instructions, after Harriet's death in 1986, the Freeman House was turned over to the architecture school at the University of Southern California. But with no financial aid, Professor Jeffrey Chusid also serves as fundraiser for a much needed renovation. Where the steel is exposed, go ahead and, and stop the rusting on it. And then we'll make new blocks and put them back into place here. The blocks are beginning to disintegrate. And unless something is done within the next couple of years, it could be a disaster. Another quake and, you know, this, this could be through. Like so many things worth saving in Hollywood, the fate of the Freeman House will depend on the kindness of strangers. But anyone wishing to be enveloped by another era need only come here, where, on a rare jasmine-scented evening, you could believe it's a city where some dreams may still come true. For Classic Hollywood, I'm Peter Jones.